Grenades are probably the area of the game that has changed the most when going from Company of Heroes 2 to Company of Heroes 3. So in this video we will explore those changes and do a deep dive into grenades in Company of Heroes 3. The health of individual models of a squad vary in this game, going from 80 health for a Pioneer to 135 health for a Vet 3 Stostrupen. So with the most common type of grenade in Co3 doing 87 damage, Grenades often fail to kill a single model on high health elite squads. Heavy machine gun crew members have 90 health and anti-tank gun crew members have 100 health. So again the most common type of grenade fails to kill a single model from these team weapons. Most grenades have also had a damage cap added to them. What this means is they can only damage a certain number of models from each squad in their area of effect. And on this Grenadier Stick Grenade, it has a damage cap of 3 models. So only 3 models from each squad took damage from the grenade, even though there were probably 5 models from each squad in the grenade's area. And when a squad is retreating in Company of Heroes 3, it has a 25% damage reduction bonus. So a last split second retreat can really blunt the impact of a grenade. And intercepting grenades on retreating units are far less effective. When units are in cover, they have similar spacing in both games, but when they are out in the open, they are far more spread out in Company of Heroes 3. This makes it difficult for the grenade's area of effect damage to hit a large number of models. All of these factors combine, meaning the typical grenade in Code 3 is far less impactful than those from Code 2. Here is how grenades perform against units that are in cover. They do 100% damage against units in light cover, 50% damage against units in heavy cover, though the directional element of this has changed in Co3, check out my other video for more information. 100% damage against units that are inside garrisons, though I did find 3 grenades that had 150% damage against garrisons, which were the grenade launcher, the US forces paratrooper grenade, and the British commandos grenade. And finally when it comes to the elevation bonus, no grenades that I could see benefited from being thrown from a lofty height. And for more information on the elevation bonus, check out my full guide on it. Every grenade in the game has 25 penetration, so if your opponent fails to move their light vehicle away from it, the grenade can end up doing some pretty decent damage. But don't expect this to work against the more heavily armoured vehicles. And mines have 35 armour, so if you throw a grenade on top of an enemy mine, you are not guaranteed to trigger it like you were in Co2. Each one of these lines is 5 range, so you can see the Grenadier's grenade is 20 range. But when the Grenadier gets suppressed, the grenade range gets reduced by around 7. So when a unit is suppressed, their grenade range is 33% shorter. This 33% range reduction also applies to snares, such as anti-tank grenades and Panzerfausts. Whereas in Company of Heroes 2, a unit getting suppressed experienced no reduction in their snare range. Grenades thrown by hand have no minimum range to them, so you can throw them right underneath your feet, leading to this funny looking bouncing back animation. But rifle nades, which have longer range than hand thrown grenades, cannot be used shorter than 15 range away. Now the eagle eyed among you would have noticed the commando took no damage from his own grenade. Currently squads are immune to friendly fire damage from grenades thrown by themselves but they can take damage from another friendly unit's grenade up to a maximum of 50%. Strangely though, there are a couple exceptions to this, the Africa Corps Panzergrenadiers and Basilieri, the model throwing the grenade can throw it upon himself and take no damage, but throwing it at a different model in the squad will cause friendly fire damage. The same thing applies to satchel charges, the model that threw the satchel is immune to it. Regarding grenade fuse times, they start when the grenade hits the ground, rather than upon initiation of the throw. Unfortunately, at the moment the mod tools do not allow me to look up the fuse times on each grenade, but with a bit of patch note sleuthing, I believe every grenade in the game has a 1.6 second fuse. The exceptions to this are the US Forces Paratroopers and the British Commandos, with their cook grenades having a 1 second fuse, the Basilieri grenade having a 1.3 second fuse, and rifle grenades which detonate immediately upon landing. The fuse timer that is shown in game is somewhat misleading. 
because there is a gap of around 150 milliseconds between the fuse disappearing and the grenade actually exploding. So now let's take a look at the array of different grenades that are available in CO3 so you can figure out the best situations to use them in. We're starting out with the satchel charge which doesn't really count as a grenade but we'll bend the rules to include it. Found on the US paratroopers and the Wehrmacht Falschen Pioneers. It costs 45 munitions, can be thrown up to 10 range away and upon landing it has a 2.9 second fuse. I made up this graph to show how the damage of the satchel charge changes with distance away from the center of the blast zone. At the center of the blast it does 600 damage which makes it very strong against vehicles and buildings such as bunkers. And at the far edge of its radius it does 150 damage. So it should kill any model of infantry currently in the game that doesn't have some kind of defensive bonus. Now is a good time to bring up an important mechanic that impacts how grenades function against units inside buildings called damage all and hold. Basically if a weapon, in this case a grenade, lands on a building, even if there is no unit anywhere near the explosion zone, such as if the units are on the far side of a very large building, the weapon still deals damage equivalent to its far AOE value. Sort of like a consolation prize. As far as I can see, every grenade has damage all and hold enabled. Except for damage over time grenades such as phosphorus. This makes it quite forgiving to use a grenade against a large building and since we know the satchel charge does 150 damage at its far range, it will one shot anything inside the building. So sneaking up to a building from its blind spot and throwing a satchel charge into it is a good option against a machine gun since they have trouble getting out of the building fast enough even considering the long fuse time of the satchel charge. In Company of Heroes 3 there are quite a few grenades where the outer radius is actually slightly shorter than the far area value and the grenade of the rifleman falls into this category. Essentially what this means is that out in the open the lowest amount of damage the rifleman's grenade can do is 31.32 but against a building with the damage all on hold principle you will use the far AOE value which is 26.1. So I tested this in game just to double check and indeed the pioneers inside the building only took 26.1 damage. Though in the health bar it shows them as taking 27 damage which is also kind of interesting so as soon as you take even 0.1 damage, one health point will show is being removed. Which is how sometimes in my shoutcasts we see units retreating with zero health. So what I speculate is that these grenades used to have a bigger outer radius at some stage, but they got nerfed and the far area value was not adjusted alongside this. Often this wouldn't matter, but because of damage all on hold, it does matter. So I'm not sure if you consider this to be a buff to these grenades performance out in the open, or a nerf to their performance against garrisons. The second most destructive grenades are the British Footguards Light Gamma Bomb and the Wehrmacht Panzergrenadier's Bundle Grenade. They both cost 35 munitions and can be thrown 20 range. They also have no cap on the number of models they deal damage to. They both do 180 damage in the center, strong enough to kill any infantry, but the Gammon has a slightly better AoE profile and extends its radius all the way out to 6 range. This slightly weaker bundle grenade is probably for the best since Panzer Grenadiers unlock quite early through tech, gain a sprint at Vet 1 making sprint into grenade a powerful option, and they are easier to fit into your army composition, even in 1v1s I've seen 3 Panzer Grenadier builds be viable. Next up are grenade assaults, this is when each individual model from a squad throws their own grenade, so as the squad drops a model count the grenade assaults become less effective. Grenade assaults are unique in that they have quite a lot of scatter, whereas other grenades are pinpoint accurate. So when activating a grenade assault, you are never quite sure exactly where the grenades are going to land. Inspecting the craters left behind really highlights the variance from scatter. Examining the graph of grenade assaults, you can see there are two different tiers of performance. The elites, whose grenades are similar in strength to a standard grenade, but they throw many of them, and then the others, whose grenades are more similar in power to what we remember from CO2. An individual grenade from any of these grenade assaults has a damage cap of 3 models, so you will need multiple of them to land on the enemy in order to get a squad wipe. 
and this severely limits the wiping potential of the lower tier grenade assaults compared to Code 2. When it comes to munitions cost, the Gurkha's assault is the cheapest in spite of being the strongest. And all of them have 20 range except for the Africa Corps assault grenadiers. So now is a good time to talk about the combined arms buff. Each one of these dotted lines is 5 range. So the assault grenadiers as we know have 15 range. The panzer grenadiers have 13 range. And the panzer pioneer stun has the standard 20 range. Now bringing in a vehicle to activate the combined arms bonus, the assault grenadiers still only have 15 range, but the panzer grenadiers grenade seems to have gained around 6 range, going from 13 to about 19, and there is no change to the range of the panzer pioneer stun either. So I speculate that Relic reduced the range on the assault grenadiers grenade, intending to add it back with the combined arms buff, but never implemented that change. And I see no reason why the assault grenadiers should be stuck at 15 range, when the MP40 Grenadiers can sprint forwards to activate their grenade assault of similar power level. And do be aware that every single model of the squad needs to be in range for the grenade assault to activate. So for the DAC Assault Grenadiers in their V formation, the lead model ends up being around 8 range away from the target once the grenade assaults activate. So these formation differences end up shortening the effective range of grenade assaults. Now we come to what I consider to be the most disappointing category of grenades in Code 3. DISAPPOINTED! The elites that I have not yet covered. So this is US Forces Paratroopers, British Commandos and the Wehrmacht Fallschirmjäger. And I have also added in the Code 2 Paratroopers as a point of comparison. So the Fallschirmjäger grenade is best, but it does cost 5 munitions more. And all 3 of these grenades have a damage cap of 3 models, which ends up making them some of the weakest grenades in the game. Adding in the Rifeman Grenade for comparison, which also has a 3 model damage cap, the Falschmjäger Grenade is marginally better, but the Paratrooper and Commando Grenade is not. Now this isn't entirely unprecedented, in Code 2 the Paratrooper Grenade had the exact same AoE values as the Rifeman Grenade, but it had the special function of being cooked, which meant upon landing it had a 0.7 second fuse instead of a 1.2 second fuse when thrown by the Rifeman. This obviously makes it significantly harder to dodge. As of patch 1.2.0, two of these grenades did get cooked, which is a good start, but I feel their AoE values could still be improved, and perhaps a damage cap increase from 3 to 4. Now we're taking a look at the grenades of all the different mainline squads in the game, and you can see there is quite a lot of variation here. I have also included the damage cap of each different grenade in brackets in the legend. First we have the Basilieri grenade, very high damage, even enough to kill most elites, but a tiny AoE, so it heavily relies on the enemy unit being clumped. The Africa Corps Panzer Grenadier and the Section Rifle Nate are similar, 100 damage up close, and a sharp drop off in their AoE values in the mid range. With the Section Rifle Nate being slightly weaker overall, since it has 30 range instead of the usual 20. The Sapper, Grenadier, and Rifleman grenades are all quite similar with slight variations of where their AoE values drop off, though I do find it interesting the Rifeman Grenade is worse than the Grenadier Grenade given you specifically have to pay for side tech to access it. Though maybe that is explained by cost, with the grenades on the left costing 30 munitions and the ones on the right costing only 25. I have also included the Panzer Pioneer Stun in here, so you can see it is slightly under half the strength of a regular grenade. And taking a closer look at the effects of the stun grenade, any model from a squad that gets directly hit by the stun grenade gets stunned. And you can see the indicator on the two models closest to the camera. This prevents those models from firing their rifles for the duration of the stun, which appears to last for about 10 seconds. However, the other models in the squad are able to fire during this time and even use abilities such as throw a grenade. The stunned squad is blinded for the nade's duration, setting their vision to zero, though units that are targeting the stunned squad are revealed in the fog of war and you can fire back at them. Also the whole squad experiences a posture change when they are stunned, now they lie on the ground, similar to when they are being suppressed by a heavy machine gun. This greatly reduces their movement speed, I guess to around a third of their normal rate, and even the models that were directly hit by the grenade can move around for the stun's duration. 
getting stunned does not prevent a squad from being able to enter a building. This is a big departure from the Code 2 stun nade, where if only one model got hit, the entire squad would get stunned, making them unable to do anything but retreat for 5 seconds. Also watch out because you can stun friendly units if they take damage from the grenade. The stun does not prevent heavy weapons teams from firing, but the blind may cause them to lose their target. So putting your vehicle on whole fire so it doesn't reveal itself in the fog of war combined with the stun could be a decent option against an AT gun that doesn't have another unit spotting for it. Now let's have a look at the Phosphorus Grenades, starting out with the SSF Commando's Willy Pete. It does 30 damage on the initial explosion. It also has a damage over time component where it does 10 damage every 1.375 seconds and that can happen 8 times. The damage over time from the Phosphorus is able to kill, though it stops dealing damage the instant you step out of the smoke and it doesn't seem to apply any move speed debuffs when passing through it. Also, the area where you can take damage over time is larger than the initial explosion area. The red phosphorus of the Stostrupin has a very short fuse, maybe 0.3 of a second. It does the initial 30 damage, same as the Willy Pete, but appears to be bugged currently, doing no damage over time. The Stostrupin phosphorus appears to provide a larger plume of smoke, blocking more vision and potentially increasing the area where units will take damage once that bug has been fixed, and it blocks vision for 20 seconds compared to the Willy Pete at 10. The last type of grenade we'll be looking at is the Grenade Launcher. This costs 85 munitions to upgrade, comes on the Africa Corps Panzer Pioneers and the Wehrmacht Falschen Pioneers, and can launch a grenade once every 5.5 seconds or so. Now these grenades are much weaker than a typical grenade, having around half the amount of damage and a significantly smaller area of effect. The grenade launcher has 35 range, which is as far as the squad can see, but also has a minimum range of 10, so getting in close is a good counter to them. Now you may remember from earlier, they have a 50% damage bonus against garrisons, so I have set up a race between the flamethrower and the grenade launcher. The flamethrower takes four bursts to kill the squad inside, taking about 10 seconds, but the grenade launcher takes around 35 seconds. This is because the grenade launcher's far AoE value is so low, it doesn't end up doing much damage through the damage or on hold mechanic. The grenade launcher does not lose any range when the squad gets suppressed. Instead, it gains a scatter penalty, making it significantly more likely to miss whatever it is targeting. Now I'm going to cover how to use your grenades. The two main situations you want to use a grenade in are to win an otherwise losing engagement or in an attempt to get a squad wipe. Like in this case where I have a different squad in the unit's retreat path to finish it off after it gets bursted down by the grenade. If you are using grenades in situations other than this, you may be better served saving your munitions for unit upgrades or battle group abilities. Grenades can be very effective against team weapons. Due to their teardown time, the team weapon has trouble getting out of the grenade's area before it goes off. Unfortunately, there is what I would consider to be a bug related to this at the moment that is robbing grenades of their power against team weapons. When I select this MG42 in Cheat Commands mod, you can see there is the weapon itself at the top and then the four crew members down below. And now when I throw a grenade at the machine gun, note there are definitely three models in the grenade's area Only two models took damage from the grenade. What I believe is happening is that the weapon itself is absorbing one out of the three lots of damage that is allowed by the damage cap, and this is clearly not what you want to have happen when you throw a grenade at a team weapon like this. You want all of the damage going onto the crew members instead. On top of that, I believe the weapon itself cannot actually take any damage until it has been decrewed, so roughly one third of your grenade's damage just completely vanishes. I believe this currently affects all types of explosive weapons against team weapons, but it is felt most acutely with grenades since you have to spend munitions each time to use them, and you can target them to precisely land on the crew members, you're not relying on a lucky scatter roll. 
this desperately needs to be addressed by Relic and is probably part of the reason why machine gun spam is so good at the moment. Often throwing a grenade right at the start of an engagement is a bad idea. Because due to audio warnings and visual alerts, That's enemy infantry. Keep them back. your opponent will be freshly aware of the engagement, probably even looking at it, making it easier for them to dodge your grenade. So depending on what units are involved in the engagement, you may want to delay your grenade by 10 to 15 seconds, hopefully by then your opponent is distracted with some other task, making it harder for them to dodge the grenade. Likewise, if there is only one engagement happening on the entire map, there is a high chance your opponent is watching it, making it very easy for them to dodge your grenade. And even if they are looking elsewhere, they hear the grenade warning, know there is only one unit in combat, so instantly know which unit to retreat. Instead, try to throw a grenade when there are multiple engagements happening across the battlefield. Another way to make your grenades difficult to dodge is to get sneaky with them. Throwing them from behind a sight blocker such as a high wall can make them difficult to react to. Or if your squad has camouflage, having them hidden with hold fire activated and then throwing a grenade to start the engagement can have great results. This is best against isolated capping squads that are clumped up on the wrong side of cover. Another common grenading tactic Say you're sitting behind heavy cover and the enemy is closing the distance on you with the short range specialist. Try throwing a grenade into their path, perhaps on the other side of cover that you are positioned behind, potentially allowing you to win the engagement. If your opponent is occupying a building that you know only has one door, it can be a good idea to throw the grenade just outside of that exit. This way if the opponent isn't watching carefully and they try to dodge the grenade by jumping out of the building, now the whole squad is bunched up at the door right in front of the grenade which can have a devastating impact. Similar to this but against multi-door buildings you may want to throw the grenade at the exit that is closest to the enemy's base. Because if they hit retreat to try and dodge the grenade, this is the door they will jump out of. As mentioned earlier in the video, you can try to time and place your grenade into your opponent's retreat path, but since this is significantly weaker in Code 3, I'd probably only do this if I had one of the strongest grenades or grenade assaults, or if the enemy squad is already quite weak and I didn't need much more to finish them off. These are also harder to place in Company Heroes 3 because units can auto vault on retreat making their path back to base more difficult to predict. The last grenade micro tip I want to discuss is grenade cancelling. You activate your grenade and then at the last possible split second before the grenade is launched, you cancel it, typically by hitting stop. One model from your squad will show the grenade throwing animation and this may cause your opponent to try and dodge the grenade, giving you an edge in the engagement. So this tends to work better against high skill opponents who are good at dodging grenades. Interrogation training and detection avoidance avail if you cancel the grenade really late, the grenade incoming alert will show for the opponent. And if you cancel the grenade at the last possible split second, grenade! the enemy squad will even shout the grenade warning. So if your opponent isn't watching the engagement, this may cause them to retreat the squad. Grenade! Move! In Code 2 you could not cancel grenade assaults, but in Code 3 you can, however it is not as good since it ties up every single model in the grenade throwing animation, meaning none of your squad members are firing and doing damage during the grenade cancel attempt. I have already suggested a few grenade changes throughout the video, but here are a few more. I think the standard grenade should be increased in damage up to 90, so it can one shot heavy machine gun crew members. This was possible when the game launched because heavy machine gun crew members only had 80 health, but in 1.1.4 they got increased to 90 health. So one of the best counters to machine guns, the grenade, is not as effective as it should be right now. This would really help against recently recruit heavy machine guns that are only at 2 models, or in situations where you can't do that extra 2.5 damage, such as your vision has been blocked by smoke. Another thing I find unsatisfying about the grenades in Code 3 are the caps to the number of models they can deal damage to. 
I can understand these damage caps being applied to something like a tank's main gun, where in CO2 a lucky shot against a squad that happened to be clumped up could lead to a frustrating squad wipe. Oh my god! But for grenades there is no luck involved, they go exactly where you tell them to, and they cost munitions each time to use, so I don't understand why they are so restricted. The only explanation I could think of is because a lot of abilities in this game are free to use, meaning you have more munitions available for other purposes, and this could lead to grenade spam. But that just makes me question why a lot of these abilities are free in the first place. I personally find it very unsatisfying to land a perfect grenade on a mega clumped up squad, only for it to do less than half that unit's health and damage. And I feel these damage caps unfairly reward squads that have high model counts. So I have a new mechanic to propose. Any model that is inside the blast zone but outside of the damage cap takes damage equal to the far AOE value, similar to the damage all and hold principle for buildings. This would make these damage caps feel like less of an on off switch, provide better rewards for landing them against clumped up units, and reduce the advantage of high model count squads. Let's call this mechanic damage the rest in area. Now let's discuss the sound of grenades in Company Heroes 3. First off here are my current sound settings. You'll notice that I have the sound effects turned down somewhat and I've also set the dynamic range to compressed to try and reduce the volume peaks of the explosions in CO3. And here are my sound settings in CO2 for comparison. First off we will do a blind listen of four different types of grenades in CO2. See if you can guess which grenade belongs to each sound effect. We had the bundle grenade, rifleman grenade, grenadier rifle nade, and stun grenade. Now let's hear their equivalents in CO3. The first thing that stands out is the increase in volume in the Heroes 3. I did all of these sound demonstrations at roughly the same position on screen and at the default zoom level so we could compare sound levels. As you can see, the grenades in CO3 are far louder than their CO2 counterparts. Now I could reduce my sound effects volume in CO3 to equalize these values, but I measured a couple other scenes a small arms firefight, here Company Furious 2 was 1.4 decibels louder, and a Sherman driving in a straight line on follow cam center screen. Now it is CO3 that is 0.8 of a decibel louder. So my other sound effects are roughly where I want them to be, but the explosions I feel are far too loud. Now let's discuss the uniqueness of the explosion effects in CO3. Here is the bundle grenade again, and now the M8 Scott firing. Unfortunately, they sound exactly the same. And here they are in CO2 for comparison. To my knowledge, only the bundle grenade and the light gamma bomb use that explosion noise, so if you hear it, you know exactly what has happened. A big grenade has gone off. And the Scots explosion is shared with other forms of light artillery, like the LAIG. So you get so much useful information from the sound design in Company Heroes 2. And if we compare the AoE damage values of the Scott and the Bundle Grenade in CO3, you can see they are leagues apart, so them sharing a sound effect could mislead you the player to think they are going to do a similar amount of damage, which is clearly not the case. So we need more delineation between the different types of explosions, so they can be feeding us information about what's going on and helping us play better, instead of just having the volume cranked way up. Now CO3 does have a system where the exact same explosion can sound different based on chance, and the bundle grenade appears to have three different sound variations. And while some variation is nice, it does make it more difficult to pick out exactly what is happening based on audio alone.
So now you are an expert on grenades and I do hope that Relic can address some of the issues that are raised in this video. If you want to continue seeing in-depth videos like this, I hope you consider coming on board as a Patreon backer.